a fraction of a second, that green ball of light just flashed into fire and again instantaneously turned into a being that was just glowing white, hair cascading on the shoulders, luminous, and with Blessed day to all. I'm Subra, and this short video is my ode to a rather unusual and wonderful novel by Tahira Amir Khan as she takes us through the golden door. Just happy to meet with you and finally share. I read in your book that you were going to call it a different name mm -hmm. from what you eventually called it through the golden door. Yes. Why the decision to change the name this way? Okay. So this happened about uh, four years ago, four or five years ago. And uh, I was very much involved with my business and society work. And uh, as a hobby, I wanted to do what I enjoyed, which was learning about astrophysics and metaphysics and all that. Up. So, um, just in my free time, I wanted to start compiling my observations. I wanted to see how the planet was moving towards and how we were involving it. I came across the scale called the Kardashev scale by this astrophysicist, Nikolai uh, Kardashev, and I was very fascinated by that. At, at that time, I was just thinking about uh, something that was non-fiction or just an article and uh, just compiling notes on that. When uh, over the months that passed, I would say but by 2014, almost every month there were like divine interventions, supernatural experiences, I mean month after month that whole year. And I realized that it was very clear that this scientific article, book, was much more than that and I was supposed to, somehow a knowing came through, that I was supposed to interleave those supernatural experiences with that scientific book which I was writing, non-fiction book. And uh, also a knowing came to me that I was supposed to add characters, characters based on real people. So along the way it just flowed and from that book title originally it was supposed to be Transit to Type 1 which is in the Kardashev scale which talks about type 0, type 1, type 2. So I said, okay, transit to type 1. We are at a type 0 civilization that depends on fossil fuel based on limitations, based on divisions. We are on a transit right now towards type 1, which is a type 1 civilization does no longer depend on fossil fuel, which is based on limitations. We are moving towards limitless energy and also breaking the divides, not just through the internet, which is now there already, which is why we have a trans, we have a, we are on a transition. That's already sorted out. We have English as a common language, universal language, but also religious divides and uh, divisions racially and everything else. So, type one is when we break through all that. Um, and also, I saw more than that. I saw it was not limit limitless energy. Tapping, on, tapping onto limitless energy for our resources, but also within ourselves. So that was transit to type 1. With those supernatural visions, uh, there, were, there was the vision of the golden door, which was so mind-blowing, and it was so apt. As you read through the book, you'll understand why I eventually decided to use the name of the golden door and change it, the title to Through the Golden Door, and throughout the book, till the end, I'm actually discovering the keys, the keys to open the golden door, the symbolic keys. Um, so it was interesting that I had absolutely no intention of a golden door or discovering keys when I initially wrote this book, from a non-fiction with lots of facts, it became a very in informative story of a journey.
That was never planned from the beginning. It evolved over time, which was very, very delightful and surprising to me because it became far more interesting, far more impactful. And the message, there was an underlying message, which I didn't realize until closer to the end of the book, as I saw the chapters evolve. In the early part of my journey, there was a loud, audible voice. And uh, the voice, was I felt, was the voice of an angel. Could be the voice of God. What, the message was, God is sending a lot of messages to a lot of people right now. And that was so uh, clear a message to me that I could not forget the words. Every word, I could remember it and I wrote it down. I did not realize that the, this message was really the, the key message for the whole book as throughout the chapters. And it really was about how uh, we are moving towards a more communal society, how we are, the emphasis on unity, and how when I talk about everything from nature, from the intimacy with God, with societies, I had interlinked unity in every part of the story. So that was really interesting to me that I only discovered that later on. I notice your book mm -hmm. has, is a kind of a multidisciplinary wonder. It has yeah. uh, physics, poetry, mathematics, spirituality, and a whole lot of other things <laughs> all strung together. Now, how did you manage to connect the dots? I mean, you must have, in this cannot be coming from my point of view, and it cannot be coming just from rational thought. I believe that there is something uh, higher than that, and so we would like yeah. to hear more about how you came to connect the dots. The information that came through and how it connected together was just natural and it just flowed into me. And sometimes I would look back in sentence and I say, oh my God, how did I write this? And I was surprised myself. And as the thoughts would come in, it would make perfect sense. And suddenly I would talk about sunspot servers, I would link it with palmistry and I would link it with the spiritual aspects and related to energies, it felt very natural to me. Uh, I did not refer to any writing style. I had not attended any writing course. Uh, I had not consulted any authors at that time when I was writing. And uh, it was never a struggle. It, it was never a struggle. It was joyful. Um, it was like an ecstatic flow of information, experiences. To hear a grounds or experience in the latest scientific knowledge, while simultaneously allowing ancient wisdom to be part of the foundation. With a fluid literary style, she allows readers to observe a narrative tapestry of technology, mathematics, geometry, philosophy, psychology, sociology, literature, and spirituality. Over my life, I went through wealth and I went through also a lot, a lot of losses. Uh, so I could see things in both, both perspectives over my life. I saw the business side. I was involved also advising government. I was involved in heading a society for mobile devices. Um, all that gave me a good perspective on things. So I would say beyond just childhood, it was also my, you know, my uh, early adulthood that contributed and my experiences, that which led me to this point, which I could feel that through this book, I could uh, write in a way that it could re relate to people of all levels. Um, because I've seen the ups and downs. 
There's one particularly uh, intense chapter, I think it's chapter 6 if I'm not wrong, where you talk about the stigmatic zero point. Am I right? Yeah, Saying yes, that, the that's zero that's point. And, uh, so I always um, knew about the zero point. Uh, I talk about the, the geometry, Buckminster's Fuller's vector equilibrium, about reaching the null point and how that we create an empty theater, empty circus within ourselves, empty vessel and then we release and open up for many possibilities to come in. I linked it with the stigmata because of the, again, supernatural spiritual experience. And the way it felt, it was, no, it was a painful, intensely painful emotion. No physical pain, but that intensely painful emotion which was probably the most I have experienced in my lifetime. For a brief moment, and suddenly a very euphoric, very relieved, very, um, it's like you're just coming out of drowning and you're, you're saved. It's like I was just drowning and I was saved and I was feeling, yeah, very, very happy and light. Yeah, light would be the word. I it felt awesome very, very, very that. light. It felt very, it was very, very quick. And uh, that's when I felt filled. Just like spoken about in the equilibrium, the vector's equilibrium, that you feel you're coming out of nothing to something. And I felt filled. And I felt many possibilities were open to me. Many, many more. The limitations were broken. It was also mm -hmm. very interesting to read about the quark slaughter. Yes. <laughs> Could you talk a bit more about it? The quark slaughter, yeah. I, I, my passion for astrophysics. I just related to that somehow, you know, when you explain uh, the, like the quarks are the minutest particles in the universe. And then the complete opposite, the quasars, the biggest illuminating uh, energies. So um, I imagine that we're being reduced to the quarks, the smallest, minutest particles of ourselves. Um, and then with the reduction, the, the expanse of the universe gets, has more space, the more space to travel. She envisions a world where we have learned to confront and overcome our anxieties, fears, and animosities, replacing negative emotions with positive ones. This approach can help impact multiple sectors of societies. The technologies she sees can be used to aid humanity in its development of knowledge and compassion. The focus on healing the whole person, body, soul, and spirit could have implications for healing diverse cultures, families, businesses, religions, countries, and ecosystems. What we view as miraculous or supernatural could be a regular occurrence as we come to understand personal and collective identities. There is sort of a race uh, towards that completion, then completion time. There's one interesting thing that's mentioned in the book by one of the characters. Um, it's like a relay race. And the final runner is always one of the fastest and also the one with the most stamina. We are the final runners of this race. And we have to have speed, we have to have stamina. So this race towards completion of achieving that, that unity, the deep unity within us, within us, within the societies, within, with God, the God-man oneness I talk about. Um, time is of essence because uh, we see the upheavals in the world, it is quite catastrophic over the years and, uh, we, and time moves, if you probably notice that time is moving faster and faster. Even technology innovations is moving rapidly at a uh, much greater speed than before. So, which means that if technology is moving so fast and with all these upheavals, spiritually we always need to be on par ahead. 
Uh, otherwise, it could lead to detrimental effects. If we don't meet, our spiritual level is not able to uh, monitor or manage the technology that's available to us. Who are alive on earth today are the ones who would, who would work together to achieve that. Interesting that you mentioned mm -hmm. the relay race, so to say that this race is more of a collaborative than a competitive race. That's why it's race. a relay race, because if there, are, there are four members in this team, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's a relay race and we've got to pass the baton. <laughs> and then, of course, the, the final runner, we've got to have the stamina and we've got to have the speed to move fast and implement this. No one, no one is left out, Nobody, no one exception. And therefore, you're, what you're saying is every yeah. member of this race is very important. Of course, everybody's chosen yeah. to do different things. They are all different threads um, in this tapestry. Like the carpet behind you. <laughs> like the carpet behind me. <laughs> Thank you beautiful. very much, Tahira. Yeah, beautiful tapestry. Thank so, you very much, Tahira. This has been an awesome interview okay. and I'm sure the Thank readers you. will be very enlightened and entertained <laughs> at the same time. By, uh, and I hope that I hope there's a sequel behind that. Definitely, Definitely there's a sequel. So I've sequel. already started. Yeah, yes, exactly. So can you tell me just a little bit more before you end up this interview? About the sequel? About why, no, there, would I can't tell you. why there would be a sequel. <laughs> why there would be a sequel? Because it's not for me to decide. God has already planned it. The experiences already started happening a few months ago. And uh, sci more scientific discoveries coming uh, along with the spiritual experiences. So it's just something which uh, I'm being led to continue. Very clear. Uh, even the title, of course, is uh, the Through the Golden Door Book 2, but the, the emphasis is going to be slightly different. That is amazing. Thank you. And, and we look forward to the sequel as well. It's been an epiphany for us all. Thank you very much, Tahira. <laughs> all right. May your you. journey continue towards the light. May our journey. Our journey continue our, towards the light. It's yeah, definitely. Our. Okay. Our journey. We, all of us. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We are the new technology. Yes. Right? The journey comes towards a climax as Tahira soars in a mystical encounters. The flow of the journey is guided by a deep relational love. There is a joy and peace as she becomes increasingly aware of the selfless unity that she has with nature, animals, humans, and God. Moreover, she regards this as a praxeological possibility for others. The transformation of the author may be transferred to the readers as they join hands with the author to experience walking through the golden door. The wealth of knowledge and experience Tahira shares in this book as she explores the choices we have for our future inspires one to start thinking about his or her own. An important book to read in the journey of self-discovery. This book is very powerful and thought-provoking. Tahira is right when she says this, there are some things that only one can receive from God in silence. I see this now. Thank you for keeping it simple, Tahira. Thank you for sharing your thoughts with us. Your book did make me wonder. I open it up to you as a reader to evaluate and explore the theories I have shared and to even look at other theories which I may not have explored so as to draw your own conclusions. This world is magical as you perceive it, for our learning and our testing, to come out of it unscarred, coming out of an old world to a nascent new world. And as you embark on this magical and mystical journey, uncovering the cipher within my words, do bear in mind that it's important to read this book from beginning to end.